You are Peter, and upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. To you I will give the keys to the kingdom of heaven. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today we celebrate the, the feast of, of Pope St. John the 23rd. Um, today is the 61st anniversary of the opening of the Second Vatican Council, the council that uh, he called um, uh, when he was elected Pope after the death of Pius XII. Um, people thought he would just be a caretaker to the position until they could organize themselves to elect someone uh, younger as he was 78 years old and he fooled them uh, uh, all. But, uh, he called for an ecumenical council, something that hadn't taken place in, in, for 100 years, but after two world wars and the, uh, the Great Depression, uh, the Holocaust, um, uh, the, the advent of uh, nuclear weapons, all of these things, he, he felt that the, the church uh, needed an adronamento, as he expressed it. Uh, he needed to, to open the door, open the windows, and let fresh air in. And uh, so we, uh, we celebrate uh, him today. He was uh, beatified by uh, Pope James, John Paul II, and then uh, he and uh, uh, John the Twenty Third and John Paul II were together canonized uh, by Pope Benedict uh, the Sixteenth, yeah, by Pope Francis, and so uh, we celebrate uh, John today. As we begin our celebration, we prepare ourselves to meet God in Word and Sacrament. Looking at our daily lives, we look for those moments of grace and offer God thanksgiving. Remembering moments of sin, we seek God's forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the contrite of hearts. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to call sinners your redemption. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you plead for us at the right hand of your Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, shepherd and ruler of all the faithful, look favorably on your servant, John the 23rd, whom you have set at the head of your church as her shepherd. Grant, we pray, that by word and example, he may, be, may have been of service to those for whom he presided, so that the other of the flock entrusted to his care he came to everlasting life. We ask this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Listen to the word of God. A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. Jonah was greatly displeased and became angry that God did not carry out the evil he threatened against Nineveh. He prayed, I beseech you, Lord, is not this what I said while I was still in my own country? This is why I fled at first to Tarshish. I knew that you are a gracious and merciful God, slow to anger, rich in clemency, clemency, loath to punish. And now, Lord, Please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. But the Lord asked, Have you reason to be angry? Jonah left them in the city for a place to the east of it, where he built himself a hut and waited it in the shade to see what would happen to the city. And when the Lord God provided a gourd plant that grew up over Jonah's head, giving shade that relieved him of any discomfort, Jonah was very happy over the plant. But the next morning at dawn, God sent a worm that attacked the plant so that it withered. And when the sun arose, God sent a burning east wind, and the sun beat upon Jonah's head so he became faint. Then Jonah asked for death, saying, I would be better off dead than alive. But God said to Jonah, Have you reason to be angry over the plant? I have reason to be angry, Jonah answered, angry enough to die. Then the Lord said, you are concerned over the plant which cost you no labor and which you did not raise. 
It came up one night, and in one night it perished. And should I not be concerned over Nineveh, the great city, in which there are more than 120,000 persons who cannot distinguish their right hand from their left, not to mention the many cattle? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm is, Lord, you are merciful and gracious. Lord, you are merciful mm -hmm. and gracious. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for to you I call out all the day. Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Lord, Lord you are merciful Lord. and gracious. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in kindness to all who call upon you. Hearken, O Lord, to my prayer, and attend to the sound of my pleading. Lord, Lord you are merciful and gracious. All the nations you have made shall come and worship you, O Lord, and glorify your name. For you are great, and you do wondrous deeds. You alone are God. Lord, you are merciful and gracious. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You have received the spirit of adoption as sons and daughters to which we cry, Abba, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to the Lord. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. Jesus said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone in debt to us. And do not subject us to the final test. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to Lord Jesus Christ. Yesterday, Jesus and his disciples were at dinner at the house of Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. And there uh, they heard a lesson. Um, as uh, Martha was scurrying about in the kitchen, trying to do everything for this big crowd, and her sister Mary was sitting there listening to Jesus. And she came out and asked Jesus to tell her to go help in the kitchen. And Jesus said, Martha, you're worrying about too many things. She says, Mary's taken the better part. And she will not be deprived of that. Um, and what was that better part? Well, she was listening to the word of God and, and reflecting on it. She was spending some time in prayer. And uh, so the, the lesson they all learned was that they should be praying. And so as, as they've left Martha and Mary's house, his disciples ask him the question, Lord, teach us how, to, how, how should we be praying? And then he gives us uh, the prayer that uh, we've come to know as the Lord's Prayer, because it came from the Lord. Also just further by its, its opening, our Father. And it starts with, uh, you know, Father, hallowed be your name. Um, uh, in those few words uh, Jesus sums up an awful lot uh, referring to his heavenly father as um, the, the father of everyone he's talking about him as the creator he's who brought everyone and everything into being and uh, it's is establishing uh, that first commandment uh, uh, who the Lord who God is Uh, he's the God who created everything, and there'll be no false gods there. And then he says, hallowed be your name. It's uh, a statement of, of confession, a statement of witness. Um, we understand who you are. You are our creator, and, and we owe everything to you. Uh, it goes on to say, your kingdom come. He, he's talking about uh, the, the kingdom of heaven. It's, it's not a place. Um, uh can't say that well oh the kingdom of heaven is the kingdom of god is just heaven or so we're trying to establish the kingdom of god here on earth no, the, the kingdom of god is not a place but it's uh it's really a, a better translation would be the kingship it's recognizing god is the sovereign god is is the, the sole ruler of everything um and that's uh, that's what it means to pray uh, your kingdom come that all of us come to know uh god is our sovereign And then it gets very practical. Give each of us our daily bread. Um, 
we, we rely uh, upon God's graciousness for everything. Um, the food that we eat, uh, God created the, the plants and the animals and, and the fish and the birds and all the things that, uh, that make up uh, the menu uh, of people, make up their diet. Um, but it's, it's bigger than that. It's, uh, we rely upon God for all of our physical needs, for food, for clothing, for shelter, for companionship, um, for love, uh, uh, for care. All of those things are, are wrapped up into that, uh, that very basic statement, um, you know, give us this day our daily bread. Um, and uh, as the disciples will come to know, uh, you know, a little while after this, um, that daily bread uh, takes on more than just what our physical needs are, it's our spiritual needs. As Jesus took bread and sanctified it, and he became bread itself, so that uh, God himself comes to us in the Eucharist, and that's wrapped up into that idea. Um, and then he, he tells us, you know, forgive us the times we've been sinners, um, and, and we have the obligation to forgive others. Uh, wrapped up in there, um, the other seven commandments, um, the way we treat each other uh, comes out of that, that uh, all of those, those uh, interrelational things are there, that as we fail in that, um, we ask God to forgive us because when others fail us in it, we have the obligation to fail them. And finally, he wraps it up by, by just saying, and do not subject us to the final test. Uh, protect us from temptation. Um, uh, Jesus knew what temptations were. He, uh, he began his public life. He came out of his 40-day fast. Who, who did he meet right off the bat? But, uh, but Satan himself, who tempted him three times, uh, three times trying to, to trick him uh, out of being who he was and becoming uh, subservient to, to the evil one. Um, and uh, uh, he realizes that those same temptations are made to us and, and that uh, we're asking God to give us the strength that his son himself shows to stand up to that. Um, and in doing so, in the, these few short lines here in Luke and, and uh, the, the version in Matthew, um, God gives us uh, uh, kind of a perfect prayer. Um, as Jesus is teaching them, how should we pray? Take, do pray like this, and you will have covered everything. The law, the prophets, and the new covenant of love are all wrapped up uh, in that one prayer. Let's gather our needs and bring them before our God. We begin praying for peace in our world. We think uh, very specially of Jesus' own homeland is uh, a very violent war has erupted there this week. We pray to the Lord. Lord pray. We pray for the church in gratitude for God's word, God's sacraments, and God's own prayer. We pray to the Lord. Lord pray. pray for our nation. We ask that God watch over it and bless our leaders with his wisdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord pray. pray for our ministry of Catholic education, the ministry begun uh, by you. By Jesus and the, and the Holy Family, and I'm going through the years uh, through Pope John uh, right here to, to us at St. Francis. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for the sick in our community, with Connor and Connor, and Mrs. Richie, Mrs. Bernie, and all of those in need of God's healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For your intention. <laughs> Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we come before you bringing your hopes and desires. These few we've given voice, others are held silently in our hearts, but all of them we offer to you through your Son, Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. God forever and ever.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. For the earth, the work of human hands, will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, God. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have the wine to offer you. Through the vine, the work of human hands, will become our spiritual bread. Blessed are you, God. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, Almighty Father. And the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, the praise and glory of the Father. Be pleased, we pray, O Lord, with the offerings presented here, and govern with unfailing protection your holy church, together with uh, uh, John the Twenty Third, our Pope, whom we chose to be our shepherd. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just your duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, mighty and eternal God, through your Son, Jesus our Lord, as on this feast of St. John the 23rd, you bid your church rejoice. So too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing to him of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy therefore the atheists, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the two fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time of his betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it. This is the child of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jeffrey, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome then unto the light of your face. Have mercy on all of us, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her husband, your blessed apostles, and glorious martyrs, St. Francis, St. Clair, John the 23rd, and all the saints who plead you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs of eternal life. And may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, to raise our voices in the prayer given to the church by Jesus himself. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit, offer each other a greeting of God's peace.
Lamb of God. We call the Lamb of God who holds and who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper for the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. I Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Let us pray. Having been made sharers in the heavenly table, we humbly entreat you, Lord, by the power of this mystery, strengthen your church in unity and charity as you have entrusted your servant, John, with the office of shepherd. Grant him always salvation and protection, together with the flock entrusted to his care. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. Amen. The Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.